Each and every day, Earth is attacked by radioactivity, but luckily for us, most of that radiation is blocked by our atmosphere and by our magnetic field. Earth's soil contains particles of uranium and thorium, which are both radioactive, and that ends up in our food as a result. As humans began to harness the power of radioactivity, these elements, strange experiments, and weapons facilities turn in some large sources of radioactivity. From everyday items that emit ionizing radiation to a dry lake that emits enough to be lethal if you sat there for an hour, here are the most radioactive things in the world. But first, we'd like to give a quick shout out to Constant Reem for leaving us this comment. He said, En tant que le français qu'on sait que je peux vous donner si un jour vous allez en France, c'est de visiter le Mont Saint-Michel, c'est magnifique. Et sinon, super vidéo. Et oui, Constantine, j'ai déjà visité. Let us know in the comment section if we forgot to mention some radioactive things on this list and maybe we'll feature you in an upcoming video. Number 12, Bananas. Starting off with one of the least radioactive things on this list, you probably wouldn't expect bananas to be here. Many of us who need a good fix of potassium will grab a banana. However, you might not know that potassium you find in this fruit is actually radioactive. You might think to yourself, how can something like this emit ionizing radiation? Similar to some forms of granite you might have on your countertops, they actually contain potassium-40, which is a radioactive isotope. In fact, it's almost became a form of measurement when explained how radioactive something is. Getting one x-ray at the dentist's office is about equivalent to eating 70,000 bananas. The radioactive leakage at Fukushima is equivalent to about 70 million. Long story short, bananas are radioactive, but that certainly doesn't mean that you should stop eating them. You probably die of diabetes before eating the amount of bananas needed to feel radiation poisoning. Number 11, Brazil Nuts. Brazil Nuts might be hiding a little secret that you didn't know about. In case you were wondering what food emits the most ionizing radiation, that would be the Brazil Nut. This is due to the fact that the roots of the tree can reach far into the soil and soak up chemicals such as radium and then eventually into the nut. It's also been known to contain things such as selenium and barium, but the element of radium was present a thousand times more in Brazil nuts than any other food. If you're thinking about making a nuclear weapon out of Brazil nuts, you're still gonna run into some problems. The EPA has food standards on radiation, so you should be fine eating them without turning into the Hulk. Number 10, cat litter. None of us enjoy taking out the cat litter, but did you know that you were actually cleaning up radioactive waste? Some cat litter that you come across at the store does contain what's known as bentonite, a clay which actually contains traceable particles of uranium-238. But that's not all, the clay also contains thorium and potassium-40. Kitty litter is one of the most common radioactive substances found in people's homes, and it just so happens to be a great product for soaking up cat waste. Although it's just small trace amounts of this stuff, you have to begin to wonder if billions of pounds of this stuff is used around the world, how radioactive landfills might be. Hopefully the radiation won't get too out of control. If your cat begins to look as if it's developing some kind of genetic mutation, please change the kitty litter. Number 9. CT Scans Many of us go to the doctor and have x-rays or CT scans done and it's been a huge advancement in medical technology. We don't always think about what it takes in order for the doctors to see our bones, but this is almost like a 3D x-ray. Doctors literally expose you to ionizing radiation, which are actually five times more radioactive than x-rays. The beam of radiation travels through our tissue, but then absorbed by our bones. It then casts a shadow onto a photograph that doctors can study. One CT scan releases 0.01 sieverts, which is actually much more than the yearly natural dose of radiation you're exposed to naturally from our environment each year. In fact, one CT is equal to the same amount of seven years of natural radiation. You should certainly see if there are other options before taking more than five CT scans in a year. Using MRI is the best way to go, which doesn't leave you exposed. Number eight, inside space stations and spaceships. One of the main problems astronauts have to overcome is the challenge of leaving the coziness underneath Earth's atmosphere. Space is a scary place, folks, and it's easy for astronauts to be exposed to ionizing radiation, and the spacesuit doesn't keep them safe from harmful free radicals. Many people wouldn't support NASA quite as much if they understood how harmful outer space can be to the people flying out there. This is also one of the main challenges with prolonged missions such as a flight to Mars. Space radiation took its toll on many men who blasted off of Earth, many suffering from cardiovascular problems and cancer. Number 7, Exit Signs Here's another example of something emitting ionizing radiation that you come into contact with on a daily basis. Exit signs always seem to be lit up, but where are the outlets are plugged into? 
Well, there is none, and it uses a radioactive hydrogen isotope known as tritium to stay lit up. This has also been known to be used in some glow-in-the-dark watches. The signs are considered to be safe unless they were disturbed somehow. The use of tritium in exit signs was prohibited in a few universities in the US, such as Berkeley. If the sign is used properly, it can last an astonishing 20 years without needing to be replaced. But what happens when you need to throw that one away? It's recommended to not throw it away in a normal trash can and then you have to fill out some government paperwork. The estimated cost to properly dispose one could cost $150 each. Number 6. Demon Core Alright you guys, those were just some everyday type things that you didn't realize were radioactive. But there are some more radioactive things that we're going to get to here real quick. The horrifying name of Demon Core gets its name from this spear of plutonium that was experimented with in Los Alamos Laboratory in 1945 and 1946. This was an extremely dense ball of plutonium and weighed 14 pounds and only had a 3.5 inch diameter. There were two incidences where the core began to give off radiation to ones who were working with it, ultimately leading to several deaths. Harry Daglian dropped a brick into the container that was holding the Demon Core. He foolishly went to retrieve it and received a lethal dose of radiation only 25 days later. In the second incident, Louis Slotten died when a screwdriver slipped, causing a reflector to fall and the sphere of doom to become supercritical. There was reportedly a blue glow in the room, but Harry had shielded most of the radiation from infecting the crew. Nine days later, he passed away from acute radiation poisoning. Number 5. Albert Stevens Imagine being injected with plutonium, thinking you were getting some form of treatment for an illness without your knowledge, and most importantly, without your consent. The man who survived the highest dosage of radiation known in any human was Albert Stevens, who accumulated an effective dose of 64 sieverts during a 20-year period. To put that into perspective, the current dose a worker in the US is allowed to be exposed to is 0.05 sieverts per year. So there was definitely more than enough to kill this man. Similar to other metals humans are exposed to, plutonium just doesn't go away. It gets stored in bones and over time large amounts have accumulated in his spine. The real crazy part about this guy is that he managed to survive for 20 years without even showing signs of cancer. He managed to live to an age of 79 too. Number 4. Hanford Site One of the many sites across the US has become contaminated due to the Manhattan Project. The Hanford Site was the first full-scale plutonium reactor in the world. The best plutonium found in the country was put to use here, responsible for creating necessary ingredients to construct the first nuclear bombs. They continued to produce nuclear weapons here up until the Cold War, and many of them were not tested. Problems in this facility have caused much of the groundwater to be polluted to this day. It contains many hazardous materials within its walls. At the end of the Cold War, 53 million gallons of high-level radioactive waste were stored underground here near the site, and it's believed that they were actually leaking into the groundwater. If any more waste was led into the Columbia River, it would become too contaminated for purification. Families who originally worked in the plant didn't realize the river near the site was contaminated and were seen swimming there commonly. In any case, some believe the cancer rates in Washington are slightly higher due to this. Number 3. Sellafield Nuclear Decommissioning Site the Sellafield Nuclear Decommissioning Site is one of the most radioactive places in the world and the second most radioactive in Europe. It was here where they underwent the risky process of dismantling nuclear power plants in order to make them not radioactive. But in the process, they made this area extremely radioactive. The site also has several radioactive storage sites for contaminated material. The radiation close to the plant is so high that they've actually closed out tours and you won't even be able to come here with a hazmat suit. Number 2. Elephant's Foot Chernobyl, of course, is the most radioactive place in Europe, and the epicenter of where the catastrophe took place is even more radioactive than the rest of the occlusion zone. The hot toxic sludge we see in this image is still to this day extremely lethal. Stand next to this thing for 4 minutes and you'll have 2 days to live. When people say nuclear meltdown, that's literally what happened here. The radioactive materials used to fuel the plant literally melted to the core, and that's basically what we're looking at. Fukushima after an earthquake hit Japan in 2011, a tsunami greatly damaged active reactors of the Fukushima power plant, causing it to automatically shut down. The tsunami managed to damage the cooling generator system, which meant the reactors started to overheat, releasing 2.2 times more radiation than Chernobyl. The radiation levels inside the second reactor, possibly still to this day, is releasing 650 sieverts per hour. That means only going for 30 seconds would result in fatal poisoning. With Japan's advanced skills in robotics, they're hoping to clean up the mess, but even the equipment will malfunction from all the exposure. So which one did you think was the most interesting? Let us know in the comments section, and we'll see you next time.